Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel, it's Chelsea, where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. So today I have another trying on some very new makeup and just some new makeup to me. I have a hiccupy baby in the corner, so if you hear her, I'm sorry about that. We're trying to multitask here, but I'm very excited to get into these products, show you what they look like on my face, and share with you my first impressions on some. Some of these I've been using for a little bit, so I have a little bit more details to share, but that's it. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I'd love for you to consider subscribing if you have not joined the Glam Girl Squad. And let's just get right into this video. So first, I wanted to start off with a new foundation to me. So this is the Chanel Ultra Latent Velvet Blurring Smooth Effect Foundation. This has an SPF of 20. We get one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters of product and it does retail for $50. It does come in 13 shades, which is not good. I picked up the shade BD91. The shade below this was B70. B70 was a better color but the undertone was a little cooler so i went with 91 which as you see it blending out on the face in the demo it does look a little orangey but i liked the warmth better especially going into the summer months so that's why i chose this shade so it says that this is a long wearing sheer to medium coverage foundation that glides onto skin with a velvet smooth matte finish an ultra lightweight texture for a natural looking result. This particular foundation does have fragrance as with all of Chanel products and the fragrance does linger for a little bit. Um, I would say I've had this foundation on now for a good hour and I'm just now not smelling it. But I like the smell of the Chanel foundation so it's okay with me but just wanting to put that out there. So I do believe that this is a very beautiful lightweight matte foundation. I love the way that the foundation looked like when it was initially blended out onto the skin. And I do love that it's not a flat matte. So yes, it is. it does lean more and does dry down to a matte finish, but it's not a flat matte, which I really, really enjoy. Looking at my face now, I'm just like in love with it. I do need to play with this more to see how long wearing it is, but in terms of just like what it looks like on the skin, I think it looks really, really pretty. I didn't put a primer on because I wanted to see if it blurred my pores, and I do think it blurred my pores a little bit. If I wanted more of like a extreme perfected look, then I would have gone in with a, you know, blurring primer just to really conceal my pores, but I think for just initial application and if you wanted to pick up a foundation that um, kind of did the job overall. I do think it did blur my pores enough to where I noticed a difference. But so far, I am really enjoying this foundation. So I didn't have a new concealer, but I really have been enjoying this Suku concealer. I have the shade 15. I love how lightweight it is. It blends effortlessly into the skin and you can get a nice medium to potentially even full coverage with the concealer. Um, I love the undertone of that concealer as well. I think it's nice and neutral. So I do think it helped to balance out some of that extra warmth that this foundation gave. But I have been loving that concealer for sure. I didn't have a new powder, um, but I haven't had a lot of time to play with this Dior No Makeup Makeup Powder. So this is what it looks like. I have the shade 3 in and I've only used it a couple times, so I wanted to get some more use out of this one, and I really, I really, really like this one. I did a video where I compared this to the the Kosas Cloud Set powder. Love that one, and I, although I thought the Kosas powder was more like blurring on the face, um, I think it does a really good job of setting that area, leaving like a nice, beautiful like hint of a sheen without looking like extra shimmery or extra glowy. Um, if you have oily skin and you don't like any type of glow to the face, I still think you could enjoy this powder for the lifting effect that it has, if that makes sense, because it does add 
a very, very slight radiance and lifted look to the skin. So I love using that for the under eye. So next I have a new product. Shantakai was so kind and they sent me their new summer collection. And this is the Flower Power Collection. So first of all, I have to show you the little makeup bag. Is this not adorable? And then it says Flower Power on the back. I am so putting this in my bathroom vanity. This is just pretty to look at. In this collection, we have two new products and one return of their famous blurring powder. So I picked up their blurring powder last year when it had the hummingbird on it. And this powder, oh, it blurs so good. I should do a comparison of this and the Kostas one. If you want to see a video of that, let me know because this is such a beautiful blurring powder and I'm now I'm like, which one blurs better? Um, but this is what it looks like and I use this as a finishing powder. Sometimes I will use it as a setting powder in my T-zone area or I'll just use it to just further blur that area and that's what I did today. So you'll see that coming up. But the newer product is they not only came back with their blurring powder in the original color, they added a medium deep color. So they sent me the medium deep shade. And for those of you who are looking at that and you're like, Chelsea, that's not deep. I know it is not deep. It's medium deep. Okay. I'm only calling it what they're marketing it as. Look at this outer packaging and it's like 3D. It's raised to the side. Oh, I love it. And then the back has pink writing and y'all know I love pink. So initially I was thinking I would use the medium deep shade maybe to like set the perimeter of my face. And then I was talking with Angela. She's one of the team members at Shantakai. And she was like, it actually might work as a bronzer on your complexion to so try it that way. And I did, and it does work. So here's what it looks like. Of course, you've already been seeing the demo of it. And I think it works as a very beautiful, subtle bronzer. So if you're about my complexion or lighter, you definitely could use this deeper shade as a bronzer. It's such a beautiful, silky, just perfecting powder. It blended effortlessly into the skin. And I think it's also one of those powders that would be like a no fail powder in the sense of you can't use too much at one time because it has this gelée texture. So I'll show you up close and I'm holding the baby with the other hand. That's why I'm only working with one hand. So you don't get any kick up and you don't have to worry about putting too much on your brush which I like because I can get quite heavy handed with my products. So it it's gorgeous. Like I, if you are about my complexion or lighter, try it as a bronzer. If you are deeper than me, then I would definitely say that you could use this for sure in your T-zone to blur that area. I think this one is gorgeous. I really do. And after I used the bronzer, I was like, well, let me go back in with the original powder just to further like blur my T-zone area. And I felt like that just gave the, my whole face just a beautiful blurred effect, especially like right around my pore area. It's just, like I said, it is beautiful. I'm so glad that they came back with this powder because everyone was asking for it. Well, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people wanted to try it. It's such a good powder. And I'm glad that they also decided to not only bring it back, but to also come back with a darker shade so that more people could try and enjoy the blurring powder. After that, I went in with three blushes. Yes, three. Just be an extra. I wanted to try as many new products as I had as possible. So Sarat was so kind and sent me their cream blushes. And they sent these to me, I think when they arrived to my house, it was right when I came home from the hospital. So I haven't had a chance to show them on camera, but I really, really wanted to delve into them and give them a whirl because I had, you know, tested one out on the back of my hand and I was like, that looks so, so pretty. So these are their artistic liquid blushes and they come in four shades. And the shade that I use today is classic and these are very sheer. So when applied to the back of my hand, this is what classic looks like. And as you can see from the demonstration, when blended out on the cheek, you're getting a sheer flush of color. This is what it looks like blended out on the back of my hand. And you almost really can't see it. Um, 
blend it out on the back of my hand. I added a little bit more so you can see it a little bit better. But blend it out on the face, it's a sheer wash of color. Now, for me, y'all know I love blushes. If you don't know, I love me a blush. I like for it to be impactful. Um, what I do like about this formulation is that it does dry down and it also doesn't um, pick up powder underneath the skin but when i applied it onto my cheek i had you know of course set my under eye i had also applied bronzer which are powder products and just by going in and tapping it with my finger i didn't pick up any of my foundation and powders underneath but for me the way that i would use these blushes is to use them as a base for another blush because i think that's where they work to enhance the blush that you're going to put on top but then you also get the benefit of this particular color as well i think these would look fantastic paired with the serrat powder blushes those are by far some of my favorite formulations of blushes hands down might even be my favorite just the way that they go onto the skin is just perfection and the only reason why i didn't do it today is because i had some other blushes that i wanted to show but i really do like these and i think that they are beautiful and another reason why i feel like they would be great as like a base for a blush when you initially apply them to the cheek initially just initially they're slightly tacky so then they would really grab onto the powder that you would put on top and really adhere to that now after just having it on my pan just for this time that I've been talking, this has dried down. So it doesn't stay tacky at all. And so the powder that I chose to put on top is an Hermes blush. So I picked up two shades. The shade that I applied today is Rose Palmette. Um, like everyone said, the packaging is very light. Um, kind of feels a little cheap for Hermes. If this was an Hermes, I'd say the packaging was nice. I think the packaging is pretty. You get the illusion that the packaging is heavy, but it's not. But anywho, on the inside, that's honestly what matters the most is this beautiful shade right here. And like I said, this is Rose Palmette. I'll do a quick swatch of it. This is a matte blush and this is Rose Palmette right here. So I feel like when I applied it on top of the Surratt Cream Blush, it that Surratt Cream Blush really helped to emphasize and enhance the Hermes blush on top. The Hermes blush blended beautifully on top. Um, I really, really like this color as well. This is my first time trying this color. The other shade that I picked up is Rose Blush, and this is what it looks like here. And I've already worn this one, and I think it looks so pretty. So here is Rose Blush, and then this is Rose Pommette. So I really do like the formulation of these blushes. They do blend out really, really nicely. And I am considering picking up maybe a couple more. I'll see. The third blush that I put on is the new blush that came in the Flower Power Collection by Chantecaille. This is the Flower Power Cheek Blush. It has that same 3D uh, flower embossing on the packaging as the blurring powder. And then on the inside, we get a mirror and also this beautiful, beautiful shimmer blush. So this is described as the rosy sister to the perfect blurring finishing powder. It's a silky luminous powder balm that features nourishing oils for a seamless application. So this particular blush is, it's beautiful. I decided to put it on the apples of my cheeks because, you know, I wanted to put all three of these blushes on, but I also wanted you all to see them. And so this is what the Chantecaille Rose Blush looks like swatched. You can see it compared to the two Hermes blushes and then also the Surratt Cream Blush. So you can see what it looks like. I think for me, it looks beautiful as a cheek topper. I could also wear it alone, but I think it looks better on my skin as just like a cheek topper. So you see this glow on my cheeks. I would also use this as a highlighter for my complexion just because it's got a little bit of warmth so it's not going to be in like an icy rosy color so i think it would look beautiful as either an all over cheek shade or as a highlight to the cheeks or an actual highlight on the face um 
I think they did a really good job in formulating this particular blush. So I am definitely looking forward to some more shades, some more deeper shades with this. I think they are onto something with this formulation. So I am looking forward to seeing more colors in that blush because that, that is gorgeous. I put it on and I was like, Sean Takai also sent this brush. It is their mini buff and blur brush. I forgot to use it today. It was sitting right here in front of me in this beautiful orange bag. Oh, this is so pretty. Um, but this is nice and soft and it is a synthetic vegan brush. And so I will use it again to buff in the powder. Um, but it is very, very nice and soft. And I, although it's a mini brush, I like the actual size of it. It's not like so many. I would definitely um travel with this but i would also use it on a day-to-day -day basis so i'm gonna put it right here <laughs> so i don't forget to use it in the future so for highlight i went in with two highlights once again trying to just show you the most but then also wanted to try them myself so picked up the westman atelier this is the super loaded tinted highlight illuminator and potapesh First of all, loving the packaging of this highlight. This is a beautiful leather case that the actual highlight comes in. Then we have this highlight here. The weight of this highlighter is the weight that I thought the Hermes blushes was gonna weigh. It's very thick, you could hurt somebody with this. Open it up, you've got a mirror right here, and then this is the shade Pota Pesh. Um, this retails for $75, so she is not cheap at all, but the, the Glow Impact is something special. So this is what Potapesh looks like swatched on my arm. And I think this shade is just beautiful. It's very interesting because it feels almost, almost creamy, but it's not totally cream at all. I think it has a cream-like feel, but definitely, um, you know, applies to the skin in a powder-like formulation. This is just Stunning. I saw it on Kelsey one time when we were talking and I was like, what is that? Because I need it. And she was like, Pota Pesh. And I was like, add it to cart. Right on ahead. Added that to the cart. So the glow that it left, I mean, I didn't have to do anything extra to it. I could have left it on by itself, but I wanted to take it up a notch. So I took it up a notch with one of the new Dior highlights. So they came out with two shades, shades 001 and 002, and I picked up both. So the shade that I applied over top of the Westman Atelier highlighter is this shade 001. It's a pink-based highlighter, and it's so pretty. What I enjoy about this highlighter is that it is not icy. So here is the Dior highlight in 001. And I love that even though it is a pink highlighter, it is not icy. It does have some warmth to it. So it does work for multiple complexions. It's not one of those highlighters or one of those pink highlighters, I should say, that are so icy that if you're fair or light, you're only able to wear it. The other shade is a gorgeous peach shade. Like I, I love peach highlighters can't get enough of them. So I definitely wanted this one and this is what it looks like. I didn't apply it today, um, but I will swatch it for you all. Here is the peach shade, which is 002 and oh, so pretty. The highlight on my face, honey child, she's coming for you. She is. Um, but yes, I really, really love the formulation. They blend out effortlessly into the skin. I do like that you get that beaming highlight, but if you don't want your highlight to be that impactful, if you want it to be more modest, more toned down, just apply just a little and you will get the highlight that you want, which I love about highlighters like that. For eyeshadow, I picked up a Surat eyeshadow palette. This is their 136 quad. I picked this particular palette up when I placed a larger order of the Suku products. And when I saw it, y'all know I love pink, so I was drawn to this. I wanna get more though, more shades of this formulation because I love it. I'm a fan of Suku, like, I tried them very recently and everything that I have tried has just blown me out of the water with the formulation and how the products perform. So very simple eye look that we see here, nothing complicated, but this 
shimmer right here, this like metallic shimmer shade right here, just added such a punch to this overall look and I'm here for it. So here are swatches of all the shades in the palette. So that's that beautiful, oh, look at that. It's like metallic-y, but then there's no like chunky particles in it. It is stunning. Then here's this that first shade that I went in with. It's like a rosy taupe shade. And then we have this just gorgeous like wine shade. And then lastly, this deep, rich, warm chocolate shade. I mean, like Tabitha Brown would say, get into it. Get into all of these shades because they are stunning. And the formulation, impeccable. I didn't even go in with the primer today. I usually go in with the eye primer. I didn't feel the need to. I was like, I know that these eyeshadows are gonna perform. They're gonna adhere to the lids. They're gonna stay. And this eye look, it's beautiful. You don't have to tell me, it is. Just because of how impactful the shades are. Nothing that I did, all the shades doing their own magic all on their own. So I'm really, really happy with this overall eye look. Like I said, I definitely wanna get more um, palettes because I need this formulation in my life and I need more of this formulation in my life. To finish off my eye look, I went in with some lashes that were gifted to me by this brand called Bella Shawnee. It's one of my subscribers. They were so sweet and sent me a card when I wasn't feeling well. Um, sent me a card and these lashes to my P.O. Box. These are the Forever Glamorous Lashes and they are so pretty. Like, I like these. These are glam, but I don't think they are like over the top. Like I'd act, I would actually wear these to work and I wouldn't feel like I was doing too much. Like I'm doing something. Okay, but not doing too much. I really, really like these. Um, I also like that these are comfortable. The band is not poking me in the eye. I also like when I took the lashes off of the plastic, um, this is what the inside of the box looks like, just so you know. The band was actually flexible. It wasn't stiff and rigid. Um, it was very easy to trim and the lashes themselves feel really, really nice and soft. So thank you so much for sending these to me. Um, they did not ask me to promote them, but I was like, hey, I need to put some lashes on and I wanna try them. For mascara, I went in with nothing new. I went in with the Chantecais, the Fox Sills Mascara in the shade black. And then I lined my waterline with my beloved Wayne Goss Eye Coal in the shade Rich Hazel. Yeah, the last product is the last product in the Chantecai Flower Power Collection. And it is their lip sheets in a shade called Capuchin. Capuchin? Capuchin, I think I'm saying that right. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous burnt orange sh shade. And the Chantecai lip sheets are the most comfortable hybrid of a lip gloss and lip balm. I have a few other shades of these that they sent me and I love all of them. This is what it looks like on the lips. And what I really like about these lip cheeks is that you get pigmentation. So if you don't wanna put on a lipstick then a lip gloss or you know put a balm on first and then put another product on, you get an all-in-one with these products. They've got beautiful shades as well and I mean, it's, it is a lip balm gloss formula, so it's not gonna last all day, but it does have very good lasting power for what it is. Very nourishing to the lips. Like I mentioned in a previous video, my lips have been extremely dry, and so these this lip sheet glided over it beautifully. My, my lips feel very nourished, like I don't feel the need to put on another lip balm or a lip gloss because my lips feel dry or anything like that. It is a gorgeous product and I love that they continue to make these lip sheets with each collection that they've been coming out with lately. I love them. So the last product that I want to show you all is the, is the setting spray that I use today. This is by Ashinda Sharif Beauty. If you don't know who she is, she is a celebrity makeup artist primarily with Taraji P. Henson, and she's been in the industry for well over 20 years. We had her on our Behind the Beauty show, and she is just such a beautiful, special, kind woman. Like, I, I don't even have enough words to describe how she is in person. Um, she has encouraged me so many times, and so anything that she comes out with, I really do want to support her and try. And so with this particular setting spray, what actually got me really interested in it, because I was gonna buy it to support her, but I was like, huh, this is an alkaline-based setting spray. So it's supposed to refresh the skin, hydrate the skin, and it does leave a nice 
very subtle glow. Some of the ingredients in this particular setting spray is going to be coconut, fruit oil, vitamin E, uh, rose, and also glycerin. So what I've noticed about this setting spray, because I've used it on the face, just put my skincare on and put it on the face. And I feel like I can feel the setting powder setting the face, which I think is such a great feeling. Kind of reminds me a little bit of how the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray feels when you put it on. Kind of feels like it's tightening. It's It's got this slight tightening effect, but not in a bad way. It just feels like it's setting whatever's on the face. So this is what this particular setting spray does. I think it sets my makeup very nicely. I also like how I can use it to blend in the powders on my face. So that's what I did at the end of my makeup and what you saw in the demonstration. Went in with my foundation brush and just blended everything into the skin. And I feel like the whole face just looks very cohesive, very put together and blended together. Even the highlight, initially when I applied, when I applied both of the highlighters, she was like coming for you. Now she looks like, I'm still coming for you, but I'm a little more blended. Um, I have really been enjoying this setting spray. I also like that there's some pretty nice ingredients in it and it's not a lot of ingredients at all. Like I'll show you the side of the box. These are all the ingredients in the setting spray. So she didn't put a lot of junk in it. It's also cruelty free. The packaging is recyclable and it lasts for 12 months. So. I have really been enjoying this. This is $29.50. You can go on her Instagram page and purchase it from there. If you click on there, it'll take you to the product. Um, and of course, I'll have it linked down below. But I've been reaching for this a lot. And guys, that is it. Those are all of the new products. So yes, I am very excited about the products that we played in today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of the finished look and of the products that I've used today. Everything that I use today will be listed down in the description box below. So if you're interested in any of those products, feel free to shop through my links down there. I really do appreciate it if you do. And if you've made it to this point in the video and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad because we'd love to have you. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.